And, uh, join me now is Nathan Sales, former ambassador at large and counterterrorism coordinator under President Trump, and Stephen Miller, former senior advisor to Trump and founder of American First Legal. Nathan, let's start with you. Uh, you know, Hamas has had these hostages since October 7th. Why now? What's the objective there? I think the reason, Lisa, that we're starting to see hostages released is because pressure works. Israel has been clear that it intends to apply overwhelming military pressure against Hamas leadership, against Hamas networks, against Hamas foot soldiers. Because Hamas is feeling the heat, they're now in a position where they have to release uh, hostages. And they're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They're doing it because they've calculated that it's in their interest to do so because the Israeli pressure has been so intense. But let's be clear, this is a, a good day for the hostages coming out, but it's a bittersweet day for them as well. Every one of these people who's come out uh, has either lost family members or has other family members still being held by these Hamas terrorists in unspeakable conditions. So we should be happy today for those um, who are able to be released. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. Well, and it also concerns, you know, there's been reports previously that Biden has slow walked this ground invasion, slow walked Israel's response. Uh, Stephen, I, I want to play this interview from Sky News because Israel's fighting a war, but they're also fighting a propaganda war. Let's listen to this and then I want to get you on the other side. Does Israel not think that Palestinian lives are valued as highly as Israeli lives? That is an astonishing accusation. If we could release one prisoner for every one hostage, we would obviously do that. It is outrageous to suggest that the fact that we are willing to release prisoners who are convicted of terrorism offenses, more of them than we are getting our own innocent children back, somehow suggests that we don't care about Palestinian lives. Really, that's a disgusting accusation. Yeah, Stephen, I mean, you can see it in the Israeli spokesperson's face. And just are you at, are you you're asking me this question, right? So talk about this propaganda war that Israel has had to fight. It's astonishing, really. I mean, you have a situation where Israel is being forced to release hardened killers, cold blooded terrorists, murderers and people that support Hamas in exchange for who? Grandmas and little kids whose family members were brutally murdered and raped. That's the difference here. And you're talking about a group, Hamas, that doesn't just have no regard for human life. They actively detest anyone who does not share their murderous ideology, and they take pleasure. They take satisfaction in the pain and suffering of Jews. How do you live alongside a neighbor like that? You can't. And the sad truth is, is that this ceasefire, and we understand why Israel did this to get these hostages back, but this ceasefire allows Hamas to retrench, allows Hamas to refortify, allows Hamas to hide, so that it can wage more barbaric and savage attacks against Israel. I'll just add one more point. It is unthinkable that we in the West are letting people into our countries who support Hamas. What in God's name are we doing in Europe and America that we want anyone who thinks positively about this organization anywhere near our country or families? Well, you know, Nathan, you know, let's follow that conversation that Stephen just pointed out. And we know, we know that we've had a record number of people on the terror watch list caught at the southern border, let alone who has gotten away with the gotaways. I, I mean, what's the threat to the homeland right now? You know, how concerned are you that we've allowed, you know, a Hamas network into the United States? Well, I think we have to be concerned about the possibility of follow-on attacks. Whether or not Hamas has deliberately sent operatives here into the U.S. to commit attacks, there's always the risk that people who are already here, whether legally or illegally, might say, you know what? Killing Jews sounds like a pretty good way to spend a, a Wednesday afternoon. And we've seen a dramatic increase in anti-Semitic incidents since the October 7th Hamas attacks on Israel. You know, Jews in the United States represent just about two and a half percent of the population. But according to the FBI, they are the victims of more than 60 percent of all religiously motivated hate crimes. And the number of these attacks on Jews in America has gone up by more than 400 percent, according to the Anti-Defamation League, this year compared to last year. So we have to be very, very serious about anti-Semitism. And I've got to tell you, when I look at America's universities, when I look at our elite college students and the professors who are responsible for educating them, and I see them chanting 
from the river to the sea, calling effectively for the extermination of the Jewish state. I have to scratch my head and wonder, when was it that our education system failed our students so miserably? Yeah, and we're going to get into that more with Victor Davis Hanson. You know, Stephen, I want to get you, uh, get you on this. Qatar's foreign minister uh, revealed a, a very confusing framework for peace yesterday. Let's watch this, and I'll get we your have take. We discussed with the Iranians the prospects of uh, regional split over of this, uh, this conflict and the need for us all to work together to make sure that this uh, conflict is contained and that we work together also to walk back from the 7th of October into uh, a return to, the, uh, a return to, to peace in, uh, in the region. And yeah, so Stephen, Qatar has been a safe haven for Hamas leadership and Iran funded the terror attacks. Uh, so, you know, beyond that, but how concerned are you that this could turn into a, a regional war? Well, that's what you need to avoid. And the way you avoid that is by acting quickly and not dragging it out to eliminate Hamas. The more that you drag this out, the longer that it takes for Israel to achieve the mission, the likelier it becomes to have a wider conflagration in the Middle East. Let me also make this point. If President Trump was still in the White House, the first phone call is to Qatar to say, hand over the Hamas leadership or we are going to fundamentally change your relationship with the United States in a way that you are not going to like. And they will understand exactly what it means, just like the way we put pressure on Iran so that they couldn't fund proxy wars and terrorism across the Middle East. It is shameful that a nation that is a partner economically and otherwise with the United States is sheltering the leadership of Hamas and the Biden administration doesn't do a damn thing about it. You want to stop a regional war? You get the Hamas leadership, you take them out of the picture, you eliminate Hamas quickly, and you make sure that this thing doesn't go on for months or years. You do it hard and you do it in a way where no one can ever think about striking Israel in this fashion again. Well, I think it's safe to say we're no longer feared as a country. Nathan and Stephen, I appreciate your insight. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.